Welcome to 49 Sports Games. We're taking you back to 1970 and the Forum in Montreal. We have the Boston Bruins in town to take on the Montreal Canadiens. Well, I'm actually not going to play through a game today. That's going to be a separate video. I just want to show you in this video how five-on-five -five hockey plays so you get an understanding of how the game flows. You see, the, I do have man advantage cards and those take advantage of these tiny little dice and these penalty markers, but that's for a separate video. I'll show you how penalties work. Today, I just want to focus on the core action of five-on-five -five hockey. So the Bruins are going to play pass out for their defensemen. Their D-men are also going to be active and dump and chase. The Montreal Canadiens, they're going to clear the puck for their defensemen. They're going to play pass in with their forwards, and they're also going to have their forwards active. So strategy is an important part of the game, and you'll notice here that the ice action deck is broken into three segments. You got your first segment, second segment, and the last segment. And there's a specific number of cards, and sometimes it, it could be dependent on the season that you're playing, but that's in the rules for how many cards you put into each segment before you start to play. Okay, we are just about ready to go. We got our strategy set, we got the line set, the goalies are set as well. Both goalies rolled between three and 10 on their, on their chart, so they're both good. And you can see that Jerry Cheevers in that for Boston has pretty much, the, he has the exact same ratings as Rogi Vashon for Montreal, who also rolled between three and 10, so he's gonna be good. And that's why, uh, the reason they have this same uh, ratings is because Vashon's save percentage at 914 was very similar to Jerry Cheever's at 918. So the teams are ready. Jean Beliveau is out on the ice for Montreal and Phil Esposito is on the ice for the Boston Bruins. We're ready for the face-off to start the game. The way the game flows now is through these two decks until you get to a, a penalty situation. You're going to turn over a game action card. And you're going to look at the very top here. It says face off in the neutral zone. Or if it was in the attack zone, the, whether it's the visitor or the home, then you would go down to this line here. There's other sections here. You're going to see how those work as we go through it right now. But for this play, it says in the face off in the neutral zone, the visitor wins. They're going to gain control in the neutral zone. So Phil Esposito wins a draw for the Bruins. They get possession. Had Beliveau won, I would have put the marker over there, but Boston has possessions and they have the puck in the neutral zone. So we put that marker there in the neutral zone. Now, we're gonna to go to an ice action card. There's nothing else that comes off the game action card for now. Uh, and you only ever take one uh, line item off a game action card. You always go to a new one if, if it tells you to go to a new line action. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn over an ice action card. And this one here is, uh, well, it's a pretty typical one. So this shows two different actions. It asks if the Boston Bruins, they're the Poopo puck possession, if they're playing pass out. And down here it says if your puck possession are playing clear. Well, the Boston Bruins are playing pass out. That's their strategy for this first uh, seven card segment of the first period. So they're playing pass out. So we can ignore the, the clear part down here. All we're gonna do is resolve what happens in this action here. And it says if they're playing pass out, and their defensemen are active, well, lo and behold, they do have their defensemen active, partly because we have really good defensemen who move the puck well. So Bobby Orr, of course, had a, a great year. His puck move is 17. That's, I think, might be one of the highest in all of the, the charts for 1970. But Dallas Smith at, seven, at 13, and Ted Green at 12, and Don Ory at 10. If you look at Montreal, theirs are pretty good too. So Montreal also, could have played pass out and they likely will play lots of pass out throughout the game depending on the game situation. Anything above 10 is a good number. So the Bruins have got their defensemen, they're active, so they move with control into the Montreal zone and it says here that this F, which stands for forward, is going to take a shot, that's a hockey stick, takes a shot from N plus 2. How do you determine who the forward is? Well on this chart right here, you've got three rows. You've got an F for forward. Down on the bottom, you got a D for defenseman. And the middle row is an FD, which is forward or defenseman. So you can see along the forward row, it's a center, left wing, right wing. Along the defensive row, it's left D, right D, left D, right D, right D, left D. And then the FD is 
all five players. So right D, left wing, center, right wing, left wing, center, and there's a, a left D out here somewhere too in a couple of them. So it's pretty balanced. And you can see I've got cubes set out along each of the rows. So along the forward row, you go to where the cube is, and then the next cell vacant to the right, that's who the forward is gonna be. So this forward here is gonna be the right winger, which for the Boston Bruins is Kenny Hodge. Now it also asks, is his shoot rating eight plus? That's what the eight stands for. And each player has a shoot rating. It depends how many shots on net they get. And the reason this is in there is because you know some guys have a high shooting percentage, but they don't get a lot of shots on net. So this filters out them getting too many shots. So we look at Ken Hodge and his shoot rating is a 10. So that's above eight. So that means he is going to get the shot. If for instance, it was the third line out there for Boston and Ed Westfall was the right winger, you can see his shoot rating is a seven. So it wouldn't have passed the test. So he's not going to get the shot. So instead you're going to do a rebound good and it could have been a rebound. Okay. Or it could be a TO as a turnover or a CR is for create. And you'll see create how that works here shortly. But for now, the Bruins have got their number one line out there. Ken Hodge has the puck and he's going to take a shot from in. <clears throat> so his three shot ratings are from in slot and out. His in rating is a nine, but we're going to add two to it. So it would be an 11. And I covered how shots are uh, performed in another video. I'll just show you real quick here though. <clears throat> we're going to roll a D12 for Rogi Vashon. His save is a one to seven. So if it's a one to seven, it means he makes the save. For Ken Hodge, he's a one to nine, but plus two because of this card. So that's a one to 11. So if he rolls anywhere from one to 11, he's got a really good shot. So I, I kind of, you think of it like this. If it's within his shoot rating, he's picked a corner, he's picked the five hole, he's found a spot where the goalie maybe has left it a little bit of vulnerable. And so then you're going to roll with the goalie. And if it's within his one to seven, well, then the goalie made a really spectacular save to stop that good shot from the shooter. And there's a rebound that's going to be good. If it was outside the shooter's range, inside the goalie range, there is going to be a, a save made by the goalie. There's also a rebound okay. And then, of course, if it's within the shooter's range and it's outside the goalie's range, that's the biggie. That's how you score a goal. So that's so we would resolve it. Let's see. Let's just do a real quick roll up here and see what we've got. Uh, a 17. So Ken Hodge's shot did. He didn't get a great shot on net, uh, even though he had a one to 11 chance from in. He was shooting from inside of the puck. Maybe went on edge a little bit. And Vashon was a one to. He rolled a two in his one to seven. So he's going to make the save and hold on for a faceoff. So let's look at this card just a little bit further. So it says if, if Boston's playing pass out with their D-man active, which they are, but let's say they didn't have their D-man active. And that's what this next line here says. Or if they're not active, Boston maintains control because they had puck possession. They move into the attack zone. They get to create. So what you do in that instance is you're going to take the next game action card, flip it over and look along the line that says create. And don't worry about the 10. That's for end to end hockey. This here just says the defender causes a turnover, they gain control in their own end. So Montreal now is gonna have control of the puck in their own end, had the Bruins not been playing with their D-men active. Or if Montreal had the puck to start the game, if Beliveau would, won, would have won the face off and we turn this, puck, this card over and they're playing clear, then you'd read along the clear. And it says if puck possession, or Montreal in this case, clearing, the puck is clear to the neutral zone. The highest off O rate, offensive rate on the ice takes control. So you'd look at all the O rates on both teams. So Montreal, Beliveau is 11, Cornwall is a 12, so he's the highest on Montreal. But you look over on the Bruins, and they had Bobby Orr a 21 and Phil Esposito a 21. So they would be the highest O rates on the ice. So they would take control. So we'd move the possession marker there. And it says, and if their forwards are active, well, they're not active. If it was Montreal, their forwards are playing active, but it was Boston and their forwards are not active. And if they are active, they're going to move in. And the D, in this case, it would be the left D because the one cell next to the cube would take a shot from out. But Boston's forwards are not active. It just says they would maintain control 
And so we move this back to the neutral zone and that would be the end of that card. We would shift lines. So we move both lines down and we move the defensive pairings down and then we would turn over the next card. And let's say Montreal has possession now. So we go back to the create and the create says the defender caused a turnover. They gain control in their own end. Okay, so Montreal has the puck now. We turn over the next action card. And there's, again, this is another one that there's two possibilities. You're either playing pass in or you're playing dump and chase. They are playing pass in so we could ignore all the dump and chase part. If it was the Bruins, they would look at this part down here. But we got Montreal and they are playing pass in. And it says the defender, DFDR, that is defender, creates a turnover. So the Bruins cause a turnover. They gain control in the attack zone. So we move these here. So the boss has possession. It's going to be in the attack zone. Now it asks if they have two players with a create of eight plus. So we're going to look at the players on the ice. And so now we got the second line out there. We look down their create column and Sanderson's 13, Cashman's 13, McKenzie's 15. You also look at the defenseman, even though you don't need to because you've already got two that are eight or more, but I always like to see who else is on the ice and it's Ted Green is seven, Don Ory's a six. So they didn't contribute to the chance of getting a create where if it was Bobby Orr and Dallas Smith, they both would have, but they didn't need it because the Bruins, they had a pretty amazing year in 7071. That is, they had a pretty amazing regular season in 7071. So it says if they have two creates of eight plus and they do, they got all three forwards. The pass goes to the FD in this case, it would be the left winger. And so what you would do is mark, move this over and we should have moved the forward one over. So FD, which is the left winger, left winger is Wayne Cashman. He gets a shot from the slot plus two. So his slot rating is a three plus two is a five. Against Vash on seven, you're gonna roll the dice, resolve what happens, and the, you know, then you move on. If they didn't have two with a creative eight plus, then you're going to get a chance. So they didn't get an automatic shot, but chances you know, are pretty 50-50 whether you're going to get another shot. And the way you resolve chance is you flip over a card and you look at the row that says chance. And this one here has got some writing on it because this is still a bit of a work in progress. We're down to the final few little, uh, uh, little tweaks, I guess you would call them, before the game's ready to go. But this one here says if the puck possession center, so Derek Sanderson, this in this case, if his create is 12 plus, well, Sanderson is a 13. So he gets to pass to a choice player, his choice, it just can't be himself, for a shot, it's not a slot, but any shot with a plus two. So he would look over and I think Johnny McKenzie, who's a 10, uh, defensemen don't have anything that high. So McKenzie's sitting right beside the net. Sanderson would be looking for him, try to feed him the pass and it would be a one to 12. So it's a pretty high rate again on a D20. So then you would take the shot. If his create wasn't 12, but it was greater than nine, that's what this scribble says here, or if it's greater than nine. So had it been uh, Mike Walton, because all the other uh, Bruin centers are greater than 12, but if it was Mike Walton, then you go down to, well, if it's, is it greater than nine? Well, he's an eight, so it wouldn't be any of those. So then you come down to this else, the puck is loose, defender gets control, and they move it to the neutral zone. So Montreal then would have the puck and move it out to the neutral zone. Then you're gonna switch lines again, and you're gonna rotate your D again, and you're gonna go on to the next ice action card. And it just flows just that simply like that. So we'll look at one more card here. This asks, is the defender playing safe? So Montreal has possession. It's asking, are the Boston Bruins playing safe? Well, they're not because it's early in the game. There's no point in playing safe. If you had a lead, that's when you're gonna be wanting to play safe. Now there's a chance for a penalty on the play. So what you're gonna do is roll a D6. And if it comes out to one to three, which in this case, it came out of one, that means there's a potential penalty and you're gonna apply it after the action. You're gonna roll against this penalty chart and then you're going to resolve it uh, but you're going to see that on a separate video because it's going to get too long if we keep going through that so let, let's finish up what this card shows here so if montreal was playing pass out then you would go through this here and look it says this defender intercepts the pass 
Uh, if they have two D men with a O rate of 12, well, they've got Orr and Smith on, or O rate of seven, pardon me. So they both would, and, and they would get a pretty good chance. But Montreal was playing it safe and lucky for them because this card came up. So they're playing clear, and all it says is they're just going to maintain control. So they couldn't make anything happen. They still have control. That's it for that shift. So now you're going to rotate your lines back again, and you're going to go on to the next ice action card. And each ice, each ice action card, say that 10 times, it covers approximately one minute. That's about it. So actually, let's take a look at this card. So Montreal still has possession. This is another fun one. I should have uh, looked at these cards before I uh, started flipping them over. So again, it asks if there's a penalty. So you're going to roll a D6. And if it's one to three, then you're going to apply the penalty back, you know, see from the penalty chart who the penalty is going to be on. But in this case now, it's asking if the high puck possession player with a create rating of 15 or more. Well, you look at Montreal, they got their top line out there and Jean Beliveau and Yvon Cornouaille both have create ratings of 15 or more. So it says they make a great play. They get a choice shot plus one. So then you're going to look for, again, the highest player uh, shooting ability. In this case, it'd be Cornouaille, who's a nine, add one. So he'd be a one to 10 and then roll against your achievers on a one to seven. But let's say it was their second line out there. So Pete Mahovlich. He's got the highest create, his uh, 12, and that's this next row on this ice action card says, if the high create is 12 plus, they make a good play instead of a great play. They pass to the next forward. So in this case, it would be the center. Let's take the next one along the, the F row. So it would be Pete Mahovlich, and he'd be taking a shot from the slot. So it'd be a one to five. And if they had their, not the third line, because Frank Mahovlich is a 15. But let's say they had their fourth line out there. So they had Leon Rochefort and Ray Jean Uhl out, and they had Claude LaRose out with them as well. So that, that was the line. Uh, and so they don't have a create of nine or more. And you, of course, you look at the defenseman too, and Terry Harper and Serge Savard were both fives. So they wouldn't have a nine. If they did, if it was between nine and 12, they would create, which is from the game action card. And so here it says now you go to the next action. If the high is less than nine, Defender gets control, so Boston would get control, and they would move into the attack zone because it, Montreal wasn't able to make anything happen. They turn the puck over, the Bruins get control, they move it into the Montreal land, and now you're going to turn a chance. And this chance, well, it help, works in Montreal's favor because it says Montreal causes a turnover and they just get control back in their own end. That's the end of that card. You swap lines again and you just carry on. And so the, it just flows that quickly. Let's look at one more card here, just because it's fun to do. <laughs> okay, this is a very busy card. Some don't have a lot, some do have a lot. But remember, you only ever go through one action. So even though there, it seems like there's a lot on there, it's only ever one action. In this case, if you're playing pass in, or if you're playing dump and chase. If you're playing dump and chase, there's more stuff that can happen after. But uh, first is, you know, you're playing pass in or dump and chase. Well. Uh, Montreal's got it. They're playing pass in. Their pass is intercepted. The defender takes control and they transition to an odd man rush. So the, the strategy is backfiring on Montreal here by playing pass in. Uh, it just hasn't worked out for them. And that's, that happens during the course of a game. There's going to be other times when these cards are going to work out in their favor. So you're going to roll a D12 on this odd man rush chart and then you're going to follow through on that. But that's something to be discovered at another time. I just really wanted you to see how these cards flow. And so you can kind of get a feel for the action of the game. And also as I'm, I'm getting some good comments too on the team charts versus the player cards. The best part of the, the team charts like this is you want to go from first line to second line. You just, you're going to move them that fast. The, the defensive pairings, I've got these two little cubes out here now. Uh, you could use a bigger cube to denote two. But back in 1970, you could only dress 16 players. So that's why you're missing a right winger on the fourth line and you're missing a D-man on the bottom line or bottom pairing defenseman. Uh, so I think I'll, I might adjust these cards a little bit and actually put like JC Tremblay for Montreal to go out with Jacques Leperriere uh, or for Boston, put Bobby Orr to go down with Rick Smith. But I also use these two cubes, and what I'll do is I'll rotate through. So those are my two for the first, 
and then those two, and then maybe the third pairing is J.C. Tremblay and Jacques Leperrier come out. And then, you know, they probably are going to rotate through all five. Where with the Boston Bruins, if we look over here, Bobby Orr and Dallas Smith are going to be the first one. Green and Ori, and then Orr is going to come out again, maybe with Rick Smith. And then they're probably going to go back with Ted Green and Don Ori, and then, and then back to Bobby Orr and Dallas Smith. It just gives you options for being able to, you know, put different players out on the ice. And you can also do the same thing with your forwards as well. So you don't have to use that. You could use these three things here. And that way you can say, okay, let's, let's give Mike Walton a shift with the second line. We're going to have Derek Sanderson a break. So we're going to put Walton out there with Cashman and McKenzie. You can do it just that easily. So then when you turn over a card and it says, uh, do you have uh, two forwards hitting of eight plus? Well, now you look at Mike Walton. Well, his hitting's an eight and Wayne Cashman and Johnny McKenzie are both 11. So yes, I would have two hittings of eight plus. So just some options for being able to uh, quickly move the lines. And of course, what's going to happen too is you're going to get penalties. And so a uh, way of dealing with penalties is, you know, say Mike Walton got a penalty on the play, so I'm going to put that down there. So I know he can't come out on the ice. And then I can use two cubes to, to put my penalty killers out. I've got a column here that shows for power play and short man. And so if it was short man, it'd be Fred Stanfield and Eddie Westfall would be the two guys. But then I also have these special team charts, and this makes it so much easier. And again, you'll see more of this when we go through the power plays and, and the one-man, two-man advantages. So all you have to do for Boston when you want to pick the line, because this quick decks hockey is not minute-by-minute uh, minute or shift-by-shift. Shift. It, it's just close to that. But what you're allowed to do is, if there's a penalty, you put your number one line out there, and then for the two cards, and then for the second minute, you're going to put your second line out there. It's just that quick. Rather than having to kind of fiddle around with some of the, you know, picking different players. But that also works. So it just gives you some good options for choosing players, uh, who's on the ice. And yeah, that, that's about it for now. So the next video, I hope to have up uh, probably in a week's time or so. And we'll go through the uh, one-man advantage and two-man advantage. And you can see how those are going to work. And then at some point, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to sit down and play the game. And you can see, you know, without any teaching, I'm just going to play through. And maybe it'll be Boston and Montreal for 70-71. I'm not sure. It's going to, going to depend on a few things. But uh, that's upcoming as well. Anyway, that's how you play 49 quick decks hockey, at least when teams are at even strength. Well, let me add one more thing. This is like Colombo. Just one more thing. When you're playing four on four, because four on four is even strength, as is three on three, three on three is gonna have its own separate deck of cards because it needs to capture the new overtime where it's played three on three. But in these older seasons, uh, three on three as well, there's just so much ice, so it's gonna have its own set of cards. But four on four is, is close enough to the five on five that all there's gonna be is a modifier along each of the uh, attributes that a player has. So everything from shoot over to block, and their O rate and D rate. The only thing that doesn't get modified is their actual shots rating. So the inside slot and the outside, everything else is going to be modified, but that's in the rules. So it just shows that you've got a little bit more space. So it's easier to create. It's easier to, you know, do a four check or your offensive rating comes into play better because you've got more space to work. So that's how four on four works. So again, it's just pretty quick transition, but from five on five to four on four, uh, of course, back in 7071, when there was coincidental penalties, they both went to the penalty box and you still played five on five. Uh, so you have a few different rules you have to kind of watch throughout the years. Okay, that's it for this time. That is how you play 49 quick decks hockey, at least during even strength. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on 49 Sports Games.